And the thing is, it's completely baseless because they don't need to go through that whole process of getting um, getting their gender changed to do that. They don't need to dress up and and hide. They'll just walk in and do it. They don't they don't need to go through that whole process. If they want to do it, they will just do it. Yeah, they make it, the the trans hoes make it out like uh, ch- changing the legal markers on your legal uh, changing the gender markers on legal documents will somehow make you immune to being prosecuted for sexual assault or something, which is not the case. If a, uh, the case at all. <laughs> if, if if an if actual trans person assaulted someone in the bathroom, like it, they would definitely be charged, and we would hear Absolutely. about it. Like <laughs> this is just not a realistic situation. Sorry about that. I was in my living room. Uh, no started. worries. So, uh, real quick, what are your pronouns, and also, what should I call you during the stream? Um, I I use she they pronouns. Okay. And uh, you can call me Andrea. Andrea. Okay, we will call you yes. Andrea. Awesome. I'm Thank you. Getting my stuff pulled up here. Bear with me. Okay. Yeah. Let me pull my stuff up too. Dope. So. <clears throat> Andrea is a real life uh, UK liver, right? You live in the UK. You live in uh, Scotland. No, I. Oh. No, I. I don't live in the UK. I live in America, in North Carolina. Well, I'm very sorry but, to hear um, that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm. I'm making it by as as best I can. Um, but no, I was born in England. Oh, okay. Uh, my father was is from England. Um, and he lived there for most of his life. Um, um but we moved. We moved to the U.S. and I believe it was two thousand three. Mm. Um, and so, prior so, to that, you lived in the U.K. Yeah, for I, I think I think we moved when I was either either three or four. But okay. my dad keeps up with most of the politics um, that goes on there, and um, so I, I I follow I follow I've definitely mm. been following a lot of articles and news yeah. about. Um, the Gender Recognition Reform Act. Yeah, it definitely seems like you keep off on these politics because you're the one that mm-hmm. alerted me to this. I should have yes. known, I feel like, because this happened a while ago, <laughs> or this started a while ago, and it's an ongoing yes, situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, um, so what we're doing, what we're talking about, we're not on TikTok today, by the way, just so you know, but what, we're, mean, no what, what we're talking about is um, the Prime Minister of the UK has decided to invoke a, if I understand, never-before-used legal mechanism. Is that right? Yes, it's uh, Section 35. Um, It was introduced in 1998 when Scotland uh, gained the uh, rights to make their own laws Mm. and pass their own laws without approval from uh, England. Um, And so that's been respected since then? Yes, yes, it has. Um, but England has always had the rights from Section 35 to a veto any bill that they feel does does not align with their political views, and they've never used it before. And the the use of this um, kind of sets a really scary precedent because. If they use it once and they get away with it, um, who knows what else they can push. I agree. Um, Are you a Star Trek fan? I am not. In Star Trek, there is a shadowy organization called Section 31 that that, uh, basically has uh, odd constitutional powers uh, to do things outside of the normal uh, (laughs) political accepted actions in Star Trek. And talking about Section 35 in this context made me remember that. I just have to mention Star Trek once a day or burst into flames. So I'm sorry about mm-hmm. that. I you understand. Were... <laughs> and I so understand. what? So, and, and obviously I've read about this, but in your own words, what exactly um, is the prime minister trying to block by using this action? Um, so the prime minister, um, if I remember his name correctly, let me Look into it. I always have to look it up too. Yeah, Washington Post. Why? Why do you keep asking me to spend money on you? Um, uh, Rushi Sunak. Rushi Sunak. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
he's part of the uh, Tory political party, which is uh, a very, very conservative party um, in um, in England mm-hmm. that um, kind of um, it it works very heavily with the the Church of England um, and like and pushing very conservative political decisions. Um, and he he is part of that uh, group, and he is playing this off as um, something that could impede or um, impede immigration and movements throughout uh, the between Scotland and England. Impede and, immigration. Yes, or not impede, encourage immigration from. England to Scotland. I'm um, confused. So he's arguing that by blocking this, this would encourage English folk to move to Scotland? Yes. And that's a good thing or bad thing in his mind? Uh, that is a bad thing is in his mind. He wants, he wants to keep as many trans or just as many citizens oh. living in England because if they move, move to Scotland, they're not paying English taxes. I see. And he was concerned that if this, if it becomes easier for trans folk to live their lives in Scotland, trans folk might leave England and go to Scotland because trans folk are treated like shit in England, in other words. Yes. Yes, they are. What yes, in the they, world? They really are. Yes. Um, but the, the really scary thing about this bill being blocked is it is, it's very likely that it could tear apart the entire United mm-hmm. Kingdom. Um, because Scotland already doesn't have the greatest, this, the, the, the most positive opinion on the United Kingdom. I mean, yeah. the whole fact that like, they only got the right to make their own laws in 1998 is pretty, pretty telling. <clears throat> and there are very, uh, many Scottish people who do not like the Brits. At all. Um, so tensions, if this bill gets blocked, tensions, are, tensions that are already high are going to get even higher. Now, I um, remember when there was a referendum for Scottish independence, and my perception yeah. at that time, that was a long time ago, but my perception mm-hmm. of the, at that time was that those calling for Scottish independence were primarily like very conservative folks, at least by yes. comparison to the opposition. Is my reading yes. of that correct? And do you think things may be changing in, re- in regards to uh, the sort of people that are who are becoming interested in Scottish independence? Um, I think so. I think so. Yes. Um, mainly, from what I understand um, about how uh, Scottish people, or at least a, a large portion of Scottish people, feel about uh, England, mm-hmm. is that they kind of feel like England, the the British government is kind of breathing down their backs. Yeah. Was this sentiment present during the referendum and it's just continuing on now? Is that what's going on? Yeah, it, it's just continuing on. And kind of it seems to me like now uh, folks from the left are being pulled, more folks from the left are being pulled into that sentiment as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. I'm very glad that you brought this up to me because I can't, I can't believe it slipped my radar. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm always looking for and covering. So thank you so much for that. And of course, uh, I'm of curious too. I don't know. Are you a creator? Like, do you have a, like a TikTok or YouTube or anything like that to promote? I, I, I do have a TikTok. I don't mm-hmm. really post anything besides like selfies and stuff oh, okay. on it. But I do have a TikTok. Well, you can shout it out if you'd like to, but it's up to you. You don't have to. Um... If it's just no, your personal I'm, I'm, TikTok, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's just my personal TikTok. Yeah. Um, so, okay. but you are, but you're a member of the Arcane Alliance. So, folks who are here, if you don't know, the Arcane Alliance is a community of folks who um, hopefully enjoy my content, but also we just provide community for each other. We play games together. We discuss politics. We organize. <clears throat> All that sort of thing. And so let me go ahead and get a link in the chat for anybody who would like to join that. Bear with me here. Mm. 
This link will expire. It's only good for right now. But if you would like to join, it's in the chat right now. And if it's okay with you, Andrea, what I was thinking I would do is we'll we'll go through this article together. And um, okay. um, if there's anything you feel that you want to add, go ahead and stop me and do so. Um, and then oh, I will probably yes. have questions for you along the way. Is that all right? Yes, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Excellent. It's it's the um, which one? Which one was it? It was uh, yeah. The, okay, the one you added before. Yeah, so, I'm using the uh, them dot us story. Because that yep, seemed like yep. it was pretty good for outsiders to look at and get mm -hmm. the whole picture. I, skimming through it, it yeah, it, it's pretty accurate to what's going on. Perfect. And I'm sure you'll correct us if it's not. So mm -hmm. the ty the ty so this is from them.us, which as far as I can tell is a sort of queer activism organization in the UK. Uh, or mm -hmm. not in the UK, I suppose, in the US, since it's not US. I don't really know. Whatever. Yeah, the point is... Yeah, it's in the US. <laughs> okay. The point is, the article is titled, Transphobia is Tearing the United Kingdom Apart. Scotland recently made it easier for trans folks to change the gender marker on their birth certificate. British Prime Minister uh, Rushi Sunak is willing to risk dividing the United Kingdom to block it by Vic Parsons. This was published back on January 20th. There have been updates to this story, and we will talk about that if we need to. Um, and there's a content warning on here, which I appreciate it. It's apparently going to have a discussion of SA, so if you need to duck out, that's okay. <clears throat> but on Tuesday, the conservative United Kingdom government blocked a Scottish bill that would have made it easier for trans people to change their legal gender. The unprecedented and dangerous move marks the first time that Westminster has obstructed Scottish legislation since the national since the nation rather gained power to make its own laws in 1999. So when you see Westminster referred to in an article like this, is this sort of like how U.S. people would say Washington, like Washington blocked this? Yeah. Yes, exactly that. Okay. The gender recognition reform bill was a was an amendment to the UK-wide Gender Recognition Act, or the GRA, the 2004 law permitting legal gender change. A few hundred trans people apply for this process each year, uh, which is pretty rough considering how many trans folk actually live in the UK. It's a lot more than a few hundred, um, including around 30 in Scotland. Scotland's leader, um, I think, I think I read that the UK's trans population is about. 0.4 percent which is a yes. whole lot more than a few hundred yes a lot more yeah scott um and i don't know if you know a whole lot about the state of trans for, or gender affirming care for trans folk in the uk but it's rough in a lot of ways it's rougher it, it than is. it is here in the u.s yes it's very very rough the wait times are astronomical mm -hmm. um i think the last time i checked the the standard weight uh wait list number is around 11,000. 11,000. That's not surprising. Um, Abigail Thorne, the, uh, or Philosophy Tube, um, the uh, YouTuber, posted a video about the situation in November titled, I emailed my doctor 133 times. <laughs> it's an yeah. hour and a half video in which case she, in, in which she documents the hellacious things she had to go through to get gender affirming care and like it didn't even really go well for her. Um, so things are bad in the U.S., but it looks like it's even rougher over the pond. Yes. Scotland's leader, Nicola Sturgeon. And what does that mean by Scotland's leader? Is that like the, like the prime minister of Scotland? Uh, no, no. The U.K. prime minister is uh, Rishi Sunak. Um, right. Um, and so he is the um, prime minister of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. I'm referring to um, Nicholas Sturgeon, who this article yes. refers to as Scotland's leader. Uh, Nicholas Stur uh, Sturgeon, you could essentially consider him the president of Scotland. The president of Scotland. Interesting. Okay. Um, so Nicholas Sturgeon has been a steadfast supporter of this of this simple administrative reform to benefit trans people. And in general, is Nicholas Sturgeon considered like an ally of trans rights? Yes. Yeah. That's the impression that I got. And so when the UK Prime Minister, uh, Rushi Sunak, announced that his government would use a never-before-invoked Section 35 order, the power retained by the UK to intervene in Scottish lawmaking in certain cases to stop the Scottish bill becoming law, Sturgeon tweeted that this was a full frontal attack on Scottish democracy, vowing to defend this, the legislation in court. Sturgeon warned that if Westminster successfully vetoes this bill, it would be the first of many Scottish laws shot down by the UK 
take government. So is there some sort of court that like rules on these like inter country things that occur in the UK? Like how how is this court battle going to play out? Um that would be the parliament. Okay. Um, the parliament is uh is uh they're the organ or not the the ha- the house that um invokes these laws, writes them and sends them to the prime minister for approval. Um, I cannot remember the name of the English court system, but it, if um, uh, Nicola Sturgeon uh, tries to appeal this veto, it would probably go through them. The high courts, that's what they're called. The high courts. The high courts, okay. And Mr. Jack said that this this is not about preventing the Scottish Parliament from legislating on devolved matters. Wait, who am I looking at here? Oh, oh Alistair Jack, Scottish Secretary, which I guess is some sort of like attorney, it sounds like, for the for Scotland, mm-hmm. uh, said yes. this is not about preventing the Scottish Parliament from legislating on devolved matters, but about ensuring that we do not have legal frameworks in one part of the United Kingdom, which has adverse effect on reserved matters. We should be clear that this is absolutely not about the United King- Kingdom government being able to veto Scottish Parliament legislation whenever it chooses, uh, as some have implied. I don't really understand what's being said there. So the uh, Scottish Secretary is um, essentially a um, a diplomat from England oh. um, that works with the Scottish government to kind of think uh, to kind of keep uh, keep things informed, uh, um, like keep the English government informed on matters that are going on in Scotland. So. Um, so Alistair Jack works for the UK government. He doesn't represent Scotland, really. He doesn't necessarily represent the Scottish government. He works with the Scottish government. Yeah. I gotcha. Mm. Well, this is all, this is all fitting into uh, some very well-established patterns that the UK government has had for centuries, isn't it? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Welsh leader Mark Drakeford also condemned the use of Section 35, saying it's a very dangerous precedent for devolution. The delegation of some political powers from Westminster to Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland in the late 1990s. Like Scotland, Wales has a more progressive political attitude towards queer rights than the UK government. Um, and so I understand, um, too, that um, uh, Wales and Northern Ireland recently have also had concerns about overreach from the uk government yes absolutely could you tell tell us about that or do you know anything about that well um the separation between ireland and northern ireland is 100 percent been caused by the english right um that's what created the ira and had a very 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 dangerous effect on uh, uh, citizens' lives in Ireland, mm-hmm. both Northern and uh, Ireland. <laughs> just all of Ireland, yes, agreed. Yes, yeah, just all Ireland, yes. So um, I, 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 oh, go ahead. Uh, de-evolution is uh, um, uh, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland's uh, attempt at breaking breaking away from England and uh, England's influence that they have on their government oh, because um, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales will never genuinely be like truly independent governments as long as they're tied to England. And devolution is the term that's used for uh, sort of uh, uh, grant granting these states more power separate yes. from the authority of the UK government. Yes, yes. Um, and you mentioned the IRA. I imagine most people know, but in case you don't know, the IRA is the Irish Republican Army, which is a, a resistance movement that fought the UK government and still continues to fight the UK government um, in order to, I guess I guess nowadays their, their, their mission is to free Northern Ireland. Uh, yes. they, they might sound like the good guys. They're really not. They're really total assholes. No. Um, no, they're, they're, they are terrorists. They are terrorists. They're, they're, they're right-wing extremist terrorists that have hurt a lot of innocent people. So even if they're the cause that they are saying they're fighting for is right, uh, they're, they're not the good guys at all. There's, there's not a lot of good guys here. No. 
they're, they're not. <laughs> a protracted legal fight between Scotland and Westminster will give Scottish and Welsh, Welsh independence struggles plenty of ammunition, even potentially paving the way for Irish reunification. That the Tories are prepared to risk breaking up the UK over trans rights is remarkable, even more so given how tame Scotland's proposed reforms are. So my read of this is that uh, the Prime Minister of the UK is essentially... Uh, he's like throwing a time bomb at trans rights supporters. He's saying like, okay, if you want to fight about this, you can, but like <laughs> we might have Irish unification and there, and like all these other potentially dangerous, frightening things. Am I getting, yeah. getting this right? Yes, you are. Um, if the United Kingdom breaks up, it is, uh, it is going to throw a huge wrench in uh, imports, exports, um, free travel between mm. uh, Scotland and England and Wales and England and so on uh, is, is going to be much hampered. So uh, distribution routes are going to be impeded and slowed down. Mm. Um, flights are going to be much more difficult. Um, it's, it's just genuinely a really bad idea. Yeah, so they're using like basic human rights and basic like uh, uh, eco economic concerns and using them as a weapon, as a bludgeon uh, to stop this action that would make trans people's lives easier in Scotland. Yes. The GRA, the which, uh, what was that called? Gender, uh, gender Recognition? Uh, no. No, Gender no. Recognition Act. Yes, yes. The GRA lets trans adults change the gender marker on their birth certificate, a, a document used in only three situations, when a person marries, dies, or gets their pension. The UK's 262,000 trans people, a lot more than uh, a couple, few hundred, uh, can already change their name and gender on other documents, including passports and driver's licenses, without the GRA. As barrister Julian Magum summarized, Scotland's reforms did not even create new trans rights. Instead, for a small number of people, it makes a small number of rights easier to access and slightly exp expands the class of those who can ac access them. In other words, the reforms are far from radical. They neither extended legal recognition to non-binary people, nor removed the requirement that trans people prove they're lived, that, that they've lived in their acquired gender, quote-unquote, for a period of months. The best thing about the changes was that they finally demedicalized the process, bringing Scotland in line with dozens of other countries who have self-identification laws and opening up to trans 16 and 17 uh, year olds. So uh, obviously demedicalizing the process is a good thing and I support it, but um, I would like to note that it is not <laughs> extending the, the legal recognition to non-binary people or removing the requirement that trans people uh, meet some sort of arbitrary standard of living as an acquired gender before they get their before their gender can legally be recognized. Uh, that that is not radical in any sense of the word. That's yeah, just basic basic human decency. Yes, it's basic human decency, and the uh, GRA does doesn't do that. The gender recognition reform mm -hmm. does that. Right, the gender recognition reform bill, which was a Scottish bill. The Scottish yes. bill question. Are the yes. Tories so transphobic that they are willing to risk UK unity over a tiny improvement in rights for a tiny number of people? Perhaps. Sturgeon's Scottish National Party appears, to, appears set to position the 2026 general election as a de facto second referendum on independence, which a majority of Scotland currently backs. I did not know that. Welsh independence yes. is becoming a viable option and growing numbers of voters in Northern Ireland favor Irish unity. Uh, this, if this momentum continues and a majority of voters in those countries back independence, Westminster may be forced to hold referendums that it could well lose. So do you know anything about what is behind um, the increase in support for uh, Welsh independence and uh, Irish unification and that sort of thing, or Irish unity and that sort of thing? Um, well, Irish uni uh, unity um is it, i mean it makes sense it's uh I, 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 ireland is a completely separate island from the main the main island in the united kingdom yeah it is it is not connected by any any land at all uh it does not share a border with it but 
Northern Ireland is was essentially um, colonized um, and separated from the rest of the the rest of the country and really brutally colonized in typical British fashion. It wasn't like a yes. oh let's be, let's be nice to these guys because they're white people that were colonizing. It was rough. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was very very rough. And then um, regarding what's going on in Wales, I have no idea what's contributing to the um, secessionist sen- sentiment in Wales. I'm unfortunately not too informed about what's going on in Wales right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. The problem is it's really difficult to be informed on what's going on in Wales because you just can't understand a single thing Welsh people say. That is valid. <laughs> At least that's what I've learned from that movie. What was it? Snatch? Was that the one I'm thinking of? I think so, yes. Where Brad Pitt uh, mm-hmm. is, yeah, v- uh, very stereotypical, well, like, oh, past stereotyping Welsh people, like, <laughs> like, a, yes. like a caricature of the oh, of Welsh yes, stereotypes. Yes, yes, yes. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, more likely, to, though, is that a dying government rec- recognizes that weaponizing trans issues, quote unquote, will distract voters. Primed by years of transphobic media coverage and political point scoring from its own creeping authoritarianism, this week the Tories' draconian anti-strike bill moved one step closer to becoming law, imposing, quote, minimum service levels that would give bosses the power to fire workers who refuse to work on strike days is, quote, entirely reasonable. Well, that's fucking insane. Primary mm-hmm. Rushi, uh, Prime Minister Rushi uh, Sunak said, he also announced he wants to further tighten anti-protest laws by introducing tougher police powers to allow cops to shut down protests they deem might become disruptive before, quote, any chaos takes place. So this guy is just a full-on fascist or what? Yes. Holy shit. Like, this guy just seems like like a, like a British Trump. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Like, I didn't know anything about this guy, really. I guess I should be paying closer attention. <laughs> Um, I don't know. What, what, what can you tell us about, about the UK's current prime minister that we might want to know? Um, I haven't really been following too much about Rishi Sunak. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that our, um, a couple of years ago, there was a really, really big kind of debate on who should be the prime minister. And uh, one prime minister uh, resigned a couple months after being re-elected or being elected. And was followed by, oh, I cannot remember his name. Um, um, Minister List. What was it? Boris Johnson. Yeah, Boris Johnson. <laughs> Boris Johnson. I've tried to forget him, too. Yes, yes. Um, he was, Boris Johnson was the British version of Donald Trump. That's true, I suppose. I guess this is the British version of Ron DeSantis. Yes, yes, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree on that. Uh, our, our, uh, yeah, our future doesn't look bright. When it comes to gender recognition, Sunak claims that by blocking, you know, no, let's go back to this though. This is absolutely insane. Like talking about, uh, tightening power, anti-protest laws. And the UK is already widely regarded as a security state as it is. So I, (laughs) this, this is fucking wild. It's, it's pretty crazy. When it comes to gender recognition, Sunak claims that by blocking Scotland's reforms, he is protecting women. Oh, okay. Parodying transphobic campaigners who have spread the unsubstantiated un, that's a hard word, unsubstantiated notion that predatory men will use self-ID to attack women. This is not born out of reality. Data from Argentina, which passes passed the world's first self-ID law over a decade ago. I, I did not know that shows there has been no accompanying rise in violence against women. Yes. So always fun to see um, a head of state parroting transphobic talking points that yes. Sunak made hit this claim while also seeking to empower the police only underlies the baselessness of his claim. This disturbing irony was evidenced when serving police officer David Carrick con- uh, when serving Police officer David Carrick confessed this week that he is one of the UK's most prolific rapists. Yo, what is this? The timely admission reiterates that predatory men do not need to go through the arduous process of applying to change the gender marker on their birth certificate in order to kidnap, rape, and kill women. Uh, they can simply join the police. Holy fuck, do you know anything about this? Yes, I do. I do. Um, 
it is just a an extension, an even worse extension of the bathroom laws that are being introduced in America. It is it is in it's spreading the false claim that uh rapists and molesters will use this to find a way to get into women's restrooms and grope them or harass them, uh, maybe even sexu- you know, sexually assault them. Um, and the thing is, it's completely baseless because they don't need to go through that whole process of getting, um, getting their gender changed to do that. They don't need to dress up and, and hide. They'll just walk in and do it. They don't, they don't need to go through that whole process. If they want to do it, they will just do it. Yeah, they make it, the, the trans hoes make it out like uh, ch- changing the legal markers on your legal, uh, changing the gender markers on legal documents will somehow make you immune to being prosecuted for sexual assault or something, which is not the case. If a, uh, not the case at all. If, if, if an if actual trans person assaulted someone in the bathroom, like, it, they would definitely be charged, and we would hear about okay. it. Like, <laughs> this is just not a realistic situation. But what it, I was asking is, is, do you know anything about this police officer that they're talking about, uh, I, the string of sexual I do offenses? Not. This, is, this is the first time I've heard of this. Yeah. Well, I agree with the person who wrote this article. It is very interesting to empower the police on the basis that we needed to protect people from the sexual violence of trans folk. Uh, when it's when it's this, there's a recent case of a cop uh, apparently committing many, many heinous uh, sexual assaults. Metropolitan Police Officer David Carrick pleads guilty to string of sex offenses, including 24 rape charges. That Ooh. that's a that's a lot. That's, that, that is a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, a Metropolitan Police Officer has been revealed as one of Britain's most prolific sex offenders after he admitted dozens of rapes and sexual offenses following attacks on 12 women. Uh, PC, police something, I don't know, police captain maybe? Uh, David yeah, police Ca- captain. David Carrick has, was known to his colleagues as... What, Dave? What, what is this being censored here? Hmm... You're the you're the resident expert in swear words, so I figured you would know. Um, it's a bastard. Oh, okay, bastard Dave entered guilty pleas. When so even even his fellow cops didn't like him. Enter, that's, that yeah. that takes a lot. Jesus Christ entered guilty pleas when he appeared at London Southwark Court Crown Court on Monday. You can just like shoot innocent people in the face in front of other cops, and they don't usually get mad. He admitted 49 charges, including 24 rape counts, for crimes committed over an 18-year period. The charges relate to the rape of nine different women, but some are some are multiple incident counts, meaning they cover more than 80 sexual offenses, including at least 48 rapes. Downing Street said Carrick's crimes were appalling and urged forces to root out criminal officers to restore the public's trust, which has been shattered. Well, I guess the way that um, the uh, that that Prime, Man- Prime Minister uh, Rushi wants to restore faith in the police is by giving them more power and um, and attacking trans folks. So that's really cool. Yes, yes, it is not not okay. <clears throat> When the prime minister pan with the prime minister rather pandering to the anti-trans lobby, what of Labour leader Keir Starmer, formerly a tepid tr- trans ally, instead of doing his one job of opposing the government, he agreed with Sunak and added that 16 was quote too young for a trans person to change their legal gender. Just 11 Labour MPs voted against the Conservative Section 35 order after Starmer ordered his party to abstain from voting. A sad indictment on the supposed party of equality, but on the bright side, a short list of names to remember when this year's Pride invites go out. So this is a little bit of inside baseball uh, for outsiders like me who aren't familiar with UK politics. Are you able to explain this paragraph to us? Uh, give me one second. I need to grab a cough drop real quick. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Yo, this shit's wild. And I'm very glad Andrea was here to help us with this conversation because <clears throat> it is much better with her help. All right. Sorry about that. 
It's okay. I was just asking, so like this this paragraph here is very confusing to somebody who's not familiar with UK politics. Are you able to explain what's being talked about here at all? Yes, yes. Um, so the Labour leader, uh, Keir Starmer. The, lab um, the Labour Party, is that a conservative party, a, a leftist no, party? No, it's, it's, it's more of a leftist party. Okay. Um, he, um, he is um, essentially... Uh, he, he's been elected to kind of oppose uh, British government influence in Scotland. Um, and he's kind of turned tail after, um, um, after the Section 35 was enacted. Because um, I, I assume he was under the... Um, he, he was... I assume he was expecting that it was never actually going to be used mm -hmm. and when it did get used and it did get invoked he kind of buckled and kind of just went along with it i see um the 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 idea that 16 year olds are too young to have their legal gender changed is absurd yeah it's absolutely ludicrous right it, it, it's not even talking about having it like trans health care gender affirming surgeries it is just changing a name on a piece of paper how are they too young for that yeah the whole argument that allowing young people to take part in transition in any way is dangerous is because it will cause irreversible damage right that was the name of what's her name mm -hmm. abigail schreider i think her name was her book was irreversible damage uh well changing the name on a legal document is clearly not irreversible so they're showing that yeah. this is not about them being concerned about trans youth uh being being inflicted quote irreversible damage this is about just simply denying their identity yes Happy Puritan Maybe. says howdy. Hey, what's up, Happy Puritan? Glad yeah. to see you here. Um, with the Prime Minister... Oh, we already did this. Uh, but thank you for explaining that to us. That helps us understand a little bit more about Keir St uh, Starmer and his role in all of this. In doing so, Starmer broke with the Scot with Scottish Labour, which had backed the gender recognition reforms. The betrayal is especially notable considering Starmer's express commitment to keeping Scotland in the UK. A split with Scottish Labour could widen dangerously in the event of Scottish of a Scottish independence vote. In fact, after six years of intense consultation and scrutiny of the gender recognition proposals, elected politicians from every party in Scotland had voted to improve trans rights. An impressive achievement by Sturgeon, considering no other UK party leader has managed such a demonstration of support for trans folks within their own ranks. Yet, instead of trying to emulate her political success, Sunak is apparently willing to break up the United Kingdom to undo it. Not a prime ministerial legacy usually sought, though his predecessors left the bar low. So essentially what's happening is that there has been an unprecedented um, uh, sort of reaching across the aisles in Scotland to um, support trans folk. And it's just, yeah. it's just so wild that a prime minister wants to undo all of that and just cause more division just to dunk on trans people. Absolutely. It's a... It, the British prime minister is using trans people as kind of a distraction from all the things that the British government wants to do to keep, like, just keep the UK together. Mm -hmm. But... It's already fraying at it seems. It's not it's not fixable, I don't think. Unless unless England changes a lot about government. Right. The United Kingdom's kind of on a on a timer. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be exactly in lockstep with the ideologies of the people in in these other in like Scotland and Ireland and Welsh and, and Wales and all of that. Um, or or with the rest of Europe, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. A happy Puritan says it's because the transphobic left is much stronger in labor than the rest of the Anglosphere. Well, I don't think be being transphobic is a leftist position. I don't. I don't think you can call. Uh, you can't be a leftist and be a transphobic. So I don't believe that there is any such thing as the transphobic left. What's your take? Oh, we might have lost Andrea. Oh, 
Oh, no, I'm here. Sorry. I thought you were talking to the person oh, in the chat. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was asking sorry, you, what's your take on that? Transphobic left is stronger in labor than the rest of the Anglosphere. Um, well, in, um, being from the, from the labor party does not necessarily mean that you can't be transphobic. There are plenty of transphobic people in British government. Most, most of them are, uh, in the Conservative Party, the Tories, but there are a very hefty amount of them that are in the Labour Party as well. Um, and it's disgusting, but it's how it is. And um, yeah, no, um, uh, Ireland, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales are very, very trans friendly. And it is bizarre that England just will not except except that yeah they're being a real stick in the mud and it is wild and they're doing it against immense opposition so it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it mm -hmm. i think the left in england this is from happy puritan particularly look at the greens the left is friendlier to transphobia let's say surprise and i is considering they have the dup happy puritan you're on like a whole different level than me i like i whenever we start talking about like specific goings on in like like uh like like narrow areas of modern politics like you bring up some shit that like i have never heard of and i don't know anything about not because like that's i'm not saying that's bad or anything but like you, you're just you're way past me bro like i, I don't even know what any of that stuff means <laughs> Um, the only immediate concrete success Sunak can boast is that the Tories maintain their long streak of making life that bit worse for trans and non-binary people. That's a good summary. While, resting, while resisting a minor administrative UK unity over a long-running court fight with, with Sturgeon over gender recognition will be a useful card for Sunak to have in his back pocket, ready to pull out whenever he needs a distraction from his government's authoritarian tendencies, which is exactly what you described, that they're using it as a distraction um, from all the other authoritarian actions that their government is taking. And in the event that Sunok's gambit ends with the breakup of the UK, trans folk of a centuries-old colonial power, um, how, how's that for punching above our weight? I guess that's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. We are, we are the heralds of chaos. Absolutely. Fear us, Sunok. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Happy Puritan says the English Green Party recently broke with Scottish Greens over trans rights. Uh, the Scots said the English GP was too transphobic, while Starmer is weak on trans rights. Uh, yes. Because English Labour has much more transphobia. I mean, that, that, that tracks with my reading of the situation. Yep. Cool. Well, um, that, that does it for the article. Um, and we, we expanded a little bit, too, to learn about the horrible shit this police officer did and how that plays into all these issues. But I guess, is there anything else that you think that we should know about this? Um, so, um, or I just think, any points that you want to make? Well, I think um, I have another article from CNN. I'll link it in the chat, I guess. Can I do that? Or um, could you send it on Discord? It a, yes, I can. Yes, okay. I can. Here it is. I wrote through a good portion of it. Um, and it, it kind of talks about uh, the uh, Scottish population and their response to this blocking of the bill. UK government blocks Scotland's new gender recognition law. So were you saying that you wanted to go through this article or there was something that you wanted to, to get out of this? Um, ma mainly just the, the, the portion that says, uh, what was the reaction in Scotland? Okay, what was the reaction in Scotland? The bill, I guess the bill is the, um, oh God, what is it? Gender, this? like, uh, the general, uh, eh, the Gender Recognition Reform Act. That's the one. It's so hard to keep that stuff straight. No, no, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad with acronyms. Uh, so yeah, what was the reaction in Scotland? The bill sparked emotional reaction on both sides. The debate over the proposal, this is from CNN to beware. The debate over the proposal was one of the longest, most heated in history of Scottish Parliament, and the final vote had to be postponed after the session was interrupted by protesters shouting, shame on you at the lawmakers. Hey, is this, th this is not the same hearing. This is not the same, the same hearing where, um, a turf, like, lifted up her skirt to reveal her bare, her bare vagina to everybody. This is this yes, is a separate is. event. Oh, this is the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh my god. Okay, well we gotta 
We have to watch that. Uh -huh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that is uh, I, oh, that is a very, very unwatchable clip for me. <laughs> okay, we can we, we can save it for later. No, you, it's okay. You, more, you're, you're okay. You're okay. It's fine. I just won't look at the screen. You just won't. Yeah, it's a little rough to look at. I agree. Shame yeah, on you. One, I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> Scottish Parliament. I'm going to find a, a Twitch friendly version. Okay. If I can. <laughs> This is from the sun. Uh, God, I don't really trust any of these outlets, but whatever. The best way to yeah. burn fat and get shredded. Speaking of TikTok friendly, what or Twitch friendly? What in the world is this shit? I have no idea what that is. Seven three one two. In the name of Shona Robinson, is yes eighty six. No Oh, Wooga, no kidding, Happy Puritan. The motion is therefore agreed, and the Gender Recognition Reform Scotland Bill is passed. Woo! Would go. Good shit. Love to see it. Look at all those queer people happy. Oh, but look, these two ladies. No, no, no. Let's go back. Let's go back. Look at this. These two ladies in the purple right there, they are so bothered. Oh, you guys can't see them. Let me move my face. You got to see these two women. Oh, my God. All uh, right, you see these two women in purple here. Let me let me backtrack. You guys, you got to see their reaction. This is so good. <laughs> They're so bothered by it. Thank you, thank you all. We will continue with business. Thank you. The next. A wild transphobe appears. We will suspend some business. <laughs> oh, we're not going to see it, but basically it hurt itself in confusion. It said something like, this isn't about real women. You want to see what a real woman is? And lifted up her skirt to reveal uh, things that I'm not going to reveal myself on Twitch. <laughs> yeah no it was it was terrible oh, wild like, shit. It, it, oh, it was so idiotic yeah because it would show her hoo-ha yeah no she showed her hoo-ha that is exactly what she did she just showed exactly. her hoo-ha off to everybody in that room and all the camera <laughs> anyway uh that, that's what's being described here in this this paragraph many human she, go ahead uh, she she also wasn't wearing underwear yes underneath so she actively was planning on doing that if the bill <laughs> passed, which is disgusting. Oh, my God. Just imagine the thought process that leads to that. Like, yo, I'm going to come prepared for battle, leave my panties at home. If shit goes down, I'm lifting up my skirt and showing everybody my hoo-ha. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so. So you think the UK will fall apart? I don't know. I have no idea. Human it's possible. Well, what are the odds? What are the ballpark odds? I'd probably give it like maybe like sixty percent chance that it falls apart. Oof. Like better, more than half, definitely. There, there's the tensions between those countries are really, really high. And it really is wild then that uh, the prime minister is willing to risk all of that over such something so inconsequential. Yes, it is entirely possible that uh, Ireland reunites if the UK falls apart. Yeah. Would you consider Ireland reuniting a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. Definitely a good thing. Because what is the reason for that? Like, so, like, in my mind, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that there's a lot of bad actors uh, in, in, in Irish politics. And so I guess the argument in support of it is that it would end the occupation of Nor Northern Ireland. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a worthy goal to me. That's fair, yeah. The equality... I mean, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was just reading what uh, Happy Paradin said. Um, uh, it, it really... De yeah, it really does depend. Uh, ethnic violence could, could spark back up, but I think in the long run, reuniting Ireland, Ireland will have nothing but... It, it would be incredibly good for unity between... Um, 
I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. so happy for it, but I, I don't really have the answers you're looking for. I'm sorry. It's I'm not as well informed on Irish politics. Happy Puritan <laughs> asks very good questions, and they ask a lot of them, and they're very hard to keep up with. You don't need to apologize for that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, oh, what was I going to say? There was something here. No, don't be sorry. It's okay. The human rights. Whatever. I lost it. Um <laughs> Uh, the human rights and equality organizations and campaigners welcome the new rules pointing to a growing number of democratic countries where self-determination is the norm. The Equality Network, a leading Scottish LGBTI rights group, I guess they have different acronyms over there, uh, said that after years of increasingly, public pr of increasingly public prejudice against trans people, things have started to move forward. But the bill also attracted huge, huge amounts of criticism, including from some lawmakers in the, gov in the governing Scottish National Party and Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, she's always got to show up here somewhere, who always, said the law always. could have, have a detrimental effect on the rights of women's, women and girls. Joanne, what the fuck are you talking mm. about now? Jesus she just Christ! Needs to stay relevant, she oh. just has to. Oh, she can't. Yeah. Not, she she just can't accept that she's fading into obscurity. Yeah, well, we need to protect the rights of women and girls from uh, people changing words on their legal documents. It's very important. Yeah. And exactly. it's a, it's okay, Happy Puritan. You don't have to apologize. We like that about you. Uh, but the bill also attracted huge. Okay, we already did that. Rowling and other opponents of the bill argued it would weaken the protection of spaces that are designed to make women feel safe, such as women-only shelters. And yeah, that's that's jo Joanne's been on this fucking women's shelters thing, women's shelters kick for a while, where uh, she wants to ban trans women from like abuse shelters and shit like that. What a fucking winner! The Scottish government rejected that argument, saying the law didn't change the rules on who can and cannot access single sex spaces. It also said that experiences from countries that have made similar changes showed no adverse impact on other groups. Campaigners agreed, saying, "quote There are no downsides." The LGBTQ campaign group Stone wall said for example when ireland did it nobody else was affected except trans people for the first time were able to have their gender recognized in a straightforward and empowering way by the state and i think that's the most important thing to recognize there's literally no downside to the uh to the to the new bill the new way of doing things that was passed in scotland um it's it's extremely yeah. uncontroversial the only reason it's controversial is because this fight over it is taking place otherwise like i feel like uh, m your average person who's not like super up on queer issues, like they would think this is a good thing to do. Like it would be a fairly yeah. obvious thing. I, at the very least, they would be indifferent. Right. Right. It's most, uh, generally speaking, most cis people don't really think too much about transgender people because um, it's just not it's not relevant to. Yeah, right. But I don't. I don't think that most people would be like upset by this or think it's a bad thing. No. And it's a, no. so it's a very weird thing to pick this giant battle over uh, that could potentially lead to like parts of your 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 empire like leaving and you no longer being able to economically exploit them. Exactly. It. Which seems to me to indicate that uh, uh, Prime Minister, let's get his full name. Uh, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, yeah. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is doing this because he wants to, because he wants to go after trans people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the impression that I get. Um, but that was great. Thank you for pointing out that other article. Sunak fever, as the kids say. I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with the term Sunak fever. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. I have not. That is news to me. It sounds like a very serious illness. I hope they don't get it. I hope no. they come out with the vaccine soon. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> it's because he's hot. What? what? He is not. No, attractive. he's not. Come on. He is not attractive. Oh my god. He's just like some. He's just some dude. He looks like the typical politician. Yeah. No, he's not attractive. This is Rishi Sunak. I mean, he's not ugly. He's just like no. He's not ugly. He looks like he's made. He, he, he looks like he's made of plastic. But other than that, <laughs> Happy Puritan says would. Well, I guess some of us can have those standards they want to. I don't fuck transphobes personally. Same. 
I also don't... I don't have relationships with men, so... Fair enough. Uh, I have relationships occasionally with, like... I. There have been one or two men who I have found attractive and wanted to spend time with. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, Pearson, you can't fix him. You can't <laughs> fix him. And also... The hottest British Prime Minister ever is a very, very low bar. Yeah, Boris Yeltsin, right? It's, it's on the ground. <laughs> or Boris Johnson Yeltsin. I was joking. Oh my god. <laughs> you can no, fix Boris. MTG, no! No, you can't. God, stop it! This, this, <laughs> this is toxic queer culture in play. We're seeing toxic it right now. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, is there anything else that you want to say before I let you go and play a little bit more Fortnite? <laughs> Fortnite's um, your favorite game, right? You're going to play it with me after this, you said. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. But no, but for um, real, is there anything you want to tell us? Um, No, I think that's it for me. But it was great to, uh, it was great to having, uh, being here, and I'm glad you uh, had me along for the ride. This com- I, go ahead. Oh, I hope I can inform anyone about like um the the issues that's going on across the pond so well you helped a lot this conversation wouldn't have been nearly as good without you uh we I definitely you. needed your needed your help on this one so thank you for answering the call um but mm-hmm. i i'm gonna let you go now okay okay all right have all right love you. take it easy bye-bye bye bye Gamer Girl C says thanks for educating us andrea and i agree thank you andrea <laughs> Happy Puritan says, I'm too bisexual to be left alive. Felt. I feel that. 